So, you guys are asking more questions about the triangle game than anything that I've ever been questioned about in the history of forever. Okay, so I'm sorry that the videos that I had done, that it was hard to hear me when we actually did the playthrough. I did not realize that the park behind Buckingham Palace would be so loud and there were like so many helicopters and stuff. Anyways, here is your guide how to information whatever about the triangle game. But I want to stress that this game is very reliant on imagination. If you don't believe that anything is going to happen or that it's not going to work, then it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to go into the uh, triangle dimension. You're not going to be able to actually like experience the stuff or whatever it is. You know, you have to believe that, you know, you know, you have to know that it's imagination and that it relies as much on your imagination as it does on the mysteriousness of the fact that it works. Okay, so the rules, guidelines, whatever you want to call them. The traveler, which is the person going into the triangle dimension, must lay flat on their back. Uh, it doesn't work in loud areas too well. Like behind the park it worked, but like on a school bus, in the middle of a crowded classroom or something, it's not going to work. Um, most of the times that I've done it, it's been quiet. They lay flat on their back on the floor. Um, usually it was in my best friend's bedroom, so it was just, you know, there was nothing. We didn't even have any music or anything going. Okay. So, the guide is the one that guides the traveler through the dimension and who sends them into it. And as you saw in the playthrough, the guide sits next to the person. I'm usually always on their left when I do it. And, you know, you brush the hair, if they have hair on their forehead, you brush it away so that the forehead is cleared. And with your index finger, you draw the form of a triangle on their forehead and you just keep repeating it and you draw it in time with chanting the word triangle which this is the most important part and unfortunately you couldn't really hear it in the video so the, the chant and like the tone of how you do it is triangle 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 there's no real amount of how many times you actually have to say the word or anything it's just when the guide feels that it's right usually i do it at least a dozen times somewhere between I want to say between 15 and 19 is probably about usually when I do it. Uh, it depends, you know, on the person or whatever. It, it, it changes. There's no set like you have to do it 23 and a half times or some stupid thing like that. It's not. <clears throat> um, okay, so the next thing is if there are other people around you like there were in my game, my video, you have to make sure that the people around you are quiet. They have to stay quiet. They can't be giggling. They can't be whispering. And another important thing is they cannot touch the traveler. The only person who can touch the traveler is the guide. And you only touch them when you're doing the triangle chant. After that, there is no contact. Um, I was not actually informed why you don't want contact with them when you do it and I don't have contact with the person who taught me the game anymore because I was like 10 at the time but just don't touch them 
that's pretty much it just don't touch them okay so <clears throat> I just want to stress you know when you get to this point if you're the traveler remember this is an imagination game you have to imagine you know imagine that you're going to be somewhere and as if you're the guide you want to remain calm you don't want to panic you don't want to get mad at them you want to keep a calm tone positive manner yeah <laughs> um, generally as a rule I will not go into the triangle zone unless my guide has already played the game because the guide is essentially holding your life in their hands and they're the ones who are in charge of waking you back up or bringing you back so you don't really want a guide that you don't particularly trust so but I'm sure by this time there's been people who've tried it who hasn't tried it before you know just make sure that you trust your guide if you don't have a guide that's already been in there okay so the guide will guide them through the triangle dimension you know simple questions like after after you chant the chi the triangle thing and you stop you wait for a short while and then the first question that you always ask is where are you and then they tell you they, ex they describe what's around them like I'm in a small room there's one window there's one door there's no windows, there's four doors, you know, whatever they're seeing. There's a small chair. I don't know. It's whatever they see. You guide them through. What's out the window? You know, they see a forest or something. Is the door locked? No, then what's on the other side of the door? You know, it's dark in there. Is there a light switch? Does the light switch work? What do you see? You know, you just, you guide them through. And it sounds very, I don't know what the word would be, mundane, or no, like, elementary almost. Because, you know, you're asking these simple, seeming stupid questions, but you're trying to get a grasp for what they're seeing. And the only way they have to explain it is vocally. And the only way you have to guide them is vocally. So, you know, communication is a very important thing. Um, okay, so the entities that you will meet. Occasionally there's normal people, normal per se, people in there. Or you'll see like birds or some kind of animals or something. Um... For the most part, I've never actually interacted with any of them. The most important one, well, there's two, really. I don't know which one would be more important, but the most important helpful one is the shadow dog. The shadow dog is good. He is your friend. It's essentially how it sounds, just a shadow dog or like a black dog. Um, he's kind. He'll never attack you. Um, I've never had any cases in all the times that I've played it where the dog has ever attacked anyone. Um, the dog will alarm you to if the shadow man is nearby. So, say you're in a large building and the dog starts growling. That means the shadow man is in the building somewhere. If the dog starts snarling, barking, seeming to get angrier that means means the shadow man is close or potentially right behind you or like on the like if you're in a room and there's another room next to you he could be in that other room so if you have the dog you know you want to keep the dog with you you know you're not going to find a leash and drag him along that's that's not really going to happen the dog will follow you willingly or he will guide you as well there's been the one incident which I had spoken about in my encounter video where the dog guided my friend into the forest. 
Um, if the dog seems like he wants you to follow him, follow him. Or if it seems like he want, uh, wants you to follow him, tell your guide. You know, he's acting like he wants you to follow him. Or if the dog's there and you're the guide, ask if the dog is acting like he wants the person to follow them. And then guide them. Tell them to follow the dog. You essentially have to talk them through every step that they do. The person in there is not going to do anything on their own without the guide telling them. So like if you see two doors, you're not going to try both doors if the guide told you to try the one on the left. You're going to leave that right one alone until the guide tells you to. Now, the other entity that you're going to see, which is the most important bad entity, is the Shadow Man. He's bad news bears. Extremely. If you see him, you wake up. The, you see him. You tell the guide. You know, he's right there. The guide says, wake up. Or open your eyes. Either one. You bring that person back. And when the guide tells you to open your eyes, you open your eyes back in the real world. And you come back. Because there have been... I've been told that there have been cases where people have died from not waking up, essentially, after seeing the Shadow Man. I've seen him countless times. I've played the game countless times. But every time that I see him... I wake up. I had one case where there was a girl who couldn't wake up at one point. Like, she waited a bit too long to tell me about the Shadow Man. And I told her, open your eyes. And she couldn't. And I said, open your eyes now. Come back. Wake up. And then it worked. I had to stress it more, but for whatever reason, she was having trouble coming back. And, you know, that scares me as the guide, because this person's life is in my hands. You know, I don't want something to go awry. I don't need someone's death on my hands. You know, it's like you're sitting there thinking, well, if you don't want their death on your hands, then why are you playing the game? The game is fun. But yeah, so... That's essentially the, the game. There's no like time frame of how long the game could take or anything. Uh, it could be a few minutes before you see the Shadow Man. It could be a half hour. I had a game with my best friend once. It was like almost an hour going. And then finally we're like, okay, just come back. Because, you know, we were both getting bored of it. There was nothing to do. There was no dog. There was no Shadow Man. There was essentially nothing so you know it's just it all depends on what it, on the traveler and what they see and the other thing that I just remembered that I want to mention is that you should start out in a building an apartment a house a church a building something We've found, over all the times that we've played, and we meaning me and my friend, that if you start out outside, nothing really ever happens. Like, we, that was one of the times when it was like an hour and there was just nothing. Like, we were trying, we just decided to go with it, see what would happen, but nothing happened. She just kept seeing stuff. She started out in a field. It was just flowers, and there was just nothing like eventually she came to a town or whatever but there was no dog there was no shadow man there was nothing um the shadow man does occasionally take different forms not like oh he's a lamppost now no like it could just be the shadow man and essentially you know that's what he is this is just a shadow of a man basically and he doesn't have tentacles, he doesn't have a white face, he's just shadow. And sometimes I've seen him 
with a knife in his hand. There's been once that I saw him carrying a shotgun. There was one time that he had a noose, not around his neck, but he was holding it like, hmm, this is for you. Um, there was one time that he was wearing a cowboy hat. I have no idea how that's supposed to be menacing, but I kid you not, I saw it. So essentially, you know, he could be holding something or wearing something, but the, the cowboy hat was also shadow. It's not like, oh, you know, bright straw hat on his head on the shadow person. No, it was all shadow. The noose was a shadow. The knife was a shadow. It's not like there was dripping blood or anything. That No, it was just a knife in his hand. So you have to be, when you're the traveler, you have to be very aware of your surroundings and what's going on around you when you're doing this game. And most importantly, that I want to stress, the travelers, the guides, anyone who's watching, be careful. If instinct tells you that something is wrong or that he is right there, don't mess around with it. Wake up. Wake up.